Just gotta make sure my battery lasts through yeah. tomorrow. Should. What kind of battery you use? You see the ones as we were driving yeah. here? Yeah, Double eight. So as I mentioned to you, actually, this is, we call it the docking area. The entrance, the line actually is supposed to be over here. You know what I mean? And as you can be able to realize, actually, they start to do some sort of excavation until now. When they built this temple, actually, they built it from inside to outside, according to the dynasty-wise. Meaning that the last dynasty, which is the dynasty number 30, they made the first final and the ram had avenue in front of you. That was the last dynasty. In the pharaoh name, he called it Nektanebo the first. Nektanebo the first, he was the last pharaoh in the last dynasty, which is the dynasty number 30. He made the first pilot in front of you, the Ram Head Avenue. Ram Head, this is one of the signs of Amen Ra. Amen Ra have actually four shapes, four signs. One of them, it's the Ram Head. You can be able to realize it right now. Um, you are going to find out, to find out actually that the body, it's a Leon body, which gives you the sign of power. Ram? And, and the ram head, this is the face, of the, one of the shape of Amen Ra. But you're going to realize also under the chain of the ram head, the statue of Nektanebu the first. Follow it, read this way. Guys, always watch your step, please. Thank you. Yeah, this is this. Mm -hmm. MFO, this way please. As you can be able to realize, actually, this is one of the shape of the ram head. The ram and ra, and the statue of Nektanebu, the first two, under the chain, which got some sort of protection. Who is it? Nektanebu, the first. His name is Nektanebu. Nektanebu. Is he a pharaoh? A pharaoh, yes. One of, he is the last pharaoh, actually, in the last dynasty, who made these avenues okay. and the first pylon that you're going to see. Follow me, please, and prepare your ticket. Thank you. Damn it, I lost my ticket. I'll tell you how nice it is. Let me know. <laughs> 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 Well, as I mentioned before, that every pharaoh he should do something inside the house of Amen. One of the pharaohs, he was Ramses the third. You can be able to see his statue in a very wealthy position. Is why we call him the arrogant pharaoh. Because inside you are going to find out exactly why he is very arrogant, inscription-wise and temple-wise. Please join me over here. Can be able to realize that the statue of Ramses the third in the very Osirian board, this is the Osirian board, most of them not in a very good shape. Most of them actually had been destroyed, as I mentioned, because, because of the monks and the priests over here. But why we call him the arrogant pharaoh? 
the arrogant pharaoh because he put himself in a level to Amin Ra. This is what we're going to see inside of the sanctuary. The sanctuary, which is considering the most important area inside the temple. And this is an area of front of the temple. Forget that I'm an Egyptologist and I'm going to explain to you something. You are going to explain it by yourself. When you are going to see a pharaoh, come on, give this. When you are going to see a pharaoh in a very standing position, this is Ramsay the Fair, offering incense and the root flower to the sacred boat of Amunah. We saw this before, but we would like to see something different. Come over here. Behind this pharaoh, he ordered to put the different Ganana goddesses in a very small position, in description wise. For example, that Horus, the Falcon, in a very blessing position. This is the blessing position. Horus, in a very blessing position. Look to the size of the catch Horus and the size of the Pharaoh himself. Okay? Not only Horus, half of his wife. You know what I mean? In a very blessing position. The God Sabi, the crocodile, the God Isis, Mephites, all of these are a different Ganana gods, very superior Ganana gods actually. And all of them in a very blessing position. And they are blessing, they are blessing what? They are blessing the name of Ramses the third, Cartucci's wife. And by the way, guys, Pharaohs are doing two things in their life. Names, like the most greatest one, the most courage one, the most sympathized one, etc. 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 And women. Yeah, for example, Ramses the second he had. 62 wives, 122 children. Why? Because he would like to get as much as he can from the children. To have a very big family, a very big gang, a very big dynasty. <coughs> so that's why actually, names and women, you know what I mean? That's the most important things for the pharaohs from their point of view. Here, this pharaoh, Ramses the third, we call him the arrogant one. He ordered the warders to be in a skirt like this, and the different Galana gods, the very small inscription, blessing his name, Kapuchi's wife. And here he is offering the roots flower and the incense to the sacred bull of Amin. On the other side, the story of the temple had been inscribed by hieroglyphic wife. And here the goddess Hathor holding her face to say, to tell the people exactly the story of this temple, how Ramses III he was very great. Did uh, a, a very valuable war against the Hagat, the god of the Hagat, and he got his own victory. And the same description for him, offering the incense and the roots flower to the sacred bull of Amun Ra. We saw Amun Ra, we saw three shapes of Amun Ra. We saw the ram head, we saw the sacred bull, and we saw him also human shape. And the last shape we're going to see is the scar that we are going to take around for seven times. Rounding the scarab, pushing a very good wish for that. We are going to reach it soon, very soon. Um, I'd like to thank you that I have been working with the MFO since a long time, actually. And I got this medal from the number one. I don't it's, I think it's gentle or something like this, you know, and because of my work with the MFO part. My explanation it should be very simple to you. The ancient Egyptian stuff, the ancient Egyptian history, it's not only timing and dating and that year it happened this and this and this and this. Construction line, the height is about five, seven meters. You know what I mean? This is not the ancient Egyptian. The ancient Egyptian is why they made this. Why he had been in a scripture, or why he ordered the workers to inspect himself or to be in a scripture like this. For what reason? You know what I mean? Which kind of message he would like to pass the film to the common people? 
You know what it means? Here, it's a very, very simple message. I am Ramses III, who is representing myself and offering the incense to the Rus, to the, the Rus flower, to the sacred root of Amal Ra, and behind me, all the different Yodanagats in a very small description, meaning, I'm superior, I'm very superior, very high, compared to the different Yodanagats. So I'm on the level of Amal Ra, to some extent. You know what I mean by this? Um, construction wise, it's supposed to be an altar over here and the sacred book of Amra. You know? Who was, who, at that time actually, as I mentioned, the monks and the priests, or the high monks and the high priests, this is the main power of the City the first. He made the three shackles in front of you for resting the sacred boat of Amen Ra. His wife moved, the goddess moved, and his son, the god Konsu. The one in the middle actually belongs to Amen Ra. The one on the left hand side belongs to the sacred boat of the god, the goddess moved, his wife. And over there is his son, the god Konsu. Let's have a look inside to see exactly what happens Remember always, religion is yeah. the things which is controlling everything. This chapel is belongs to Amun Ra, made by Siti the first. Normally, it was an altar over here, and the sacred boat of Amun Ra. And you can be able to realize Siti the first, in a very standing position, offering the incense and the lotus flower. And here we can be able to find out which kind of offers. At that time, the ancient Egyptian pharaohs, they are offering to the different Gadar Chicken, fruits, a bunch of fruits to the sacred boat of Amun Ra. The sacred boat of Amun Ra, you can be able to realize it, the two ram head, one here and one there. This is the real sacred boat of Amun Ra. Behind him eyes in a very blessing position. This is the blessing position. You know what I mean? She is blessing the offer. The city, the first, is offering to the sacred boat of Amun Ra. Over there, another different description. The city, the first, is offering. Both to Amin Ra, but on the human shape. Amin Ra, his wife, he is not only. They will have a roof. As I mentioned before, they would like to pass a message. You know what I mean? They can be able to pass to the ancient church and stop the ancient church. That's it. That's it. Throughout the description. This is the second year. The boxer from the church. Imagine the situation. Monks, priests, here. They are receiving the offers. From the people, you and from the pharaohs themselves. You see here, always the put in your consideration. Fear the mind, the people. This in the rear people who are going to ask you. I think I'm here to see. What about here? Which we are going to visit right now. That's Ramses II. The queen is like actually one of his favorite daughters. Her name is Red Rock. Who's this person to the right? But the same, the same, the same, the same statue for us the time. Watch your step, please. Huh? Sure. The picture in front of the bed. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That is.
So guys, the hippo style hood, 134 columns, similar to this one, made by Siti the first and his son Ramses the second. And for your information that everything inside the temple it should be colored, <coughs> such as this color on the ceiling, you can be able to see it back here. Some of the color actually still remaining, not in a very good shape actually. But for your information that everything here it should be colored. But we are talking about over the 4,000 years. So most of the color actually had been erased. The 134 columns made by Siti the first and Ramses the second, dedicating to the God Amin Ra and to the different God Allah God. And here we can be able to see exactly the difference between pharaohs, personal wise and character wise. We saw the arrogant pharaoh, Ramses the third. Let's see Siti the first, always in a very kneeling position when he started to do his own office in a very, very kneeling position, to give you the impression, kneeling, meaning that humble, do you, to the different Gada Nagasas. Over there, actually, the city the first, in a very kneeling position, he is offering the four sacred cows, to the God meaning the God of fertility, the God who has an electric penis only. This is the God of fertility, and you're going to see this God in everywhere, actually. Remember, names and women, 62 wives, he should be, very involved, offering different, offering a hell of offers to the God mean, the God of fertility, to get as much as he can from the children. In a very kneeling position, Siti the first, offering the four sacred cows to the God mean, the God of fertility. Four sacred cows. Remember guys, four sacred cows. It should be a link between the ancient Egyptian religion and the Hindu's religion. The Hindu's the cows are something very important, something very sacred for the Hindus. So they are a link actually between the ancient Egyptian religion and the Hindus' religion. They do some sort of offers. The cows are something very important. And you can be able to see it in everywhere actually. It should be offered to the different Gada Here, the four sacred cows. Over there actually, that he is offering the English to the God Amr. The inks that they are writing everything by these inks. You know? mm -hmm. um, meaning here over there actually he's offering the Lutz flower. The Lutz flower is something very sacred. And that's why actually you're going to see it in everywhere. Which kind of offers? It should be offered to the different Gada Nagadzi. You're going to see it in the temples. And also you're going to see it tomorrow, especially in Hatshepsut Temple. Hatshepsut Temple, she, is, she was a, a great queen actually. And she had been adored by the ancient Egyptian common people. And she is one of the pharaohs that she is, she was controlling the monks and the priests perfectly. And by the way, that she died naturally. Most of the pharaohs, they had been killed. A few pharaohs actually, they had been died naturally. That's because of the people. They were protecting them. You got it? Cartouche's wife. You can be able to see this is the name of Siti the first. Cartouche. Why? And you can be able to see how. The cartouche was very wide. The description, actually, it's very clear. You know what I mean? Alphabetical wide, which gives you the indication that at the time of Siti the first and Ramsay the second, Egypt, financially wise, was very, very good. That's why, actually, throughout the inscription and the construction, you know what I mean? Give you the indication that Egypt at the time was very rich. The size of one columns, it takes, if you're going to black your eyes, it takes around 13, between 11 and 13 adults to get only the size, you know what I mean, for each columns, okay? Which gives you the indication that it takes a long time to build one columns. I need you to imagine exactly how many people bless you. Thank you. How many workers, how many bless you, how, how many persons we have been sharing for building one column. And also for your information, that we built the 134 columns in 34 years. 34 years. Which gives you the indication that how devoted the people at that time to the ancient Egyptian religion. In front of you over here, you can be able to see Siti the first in a very kneeling position offering the Lutz flower to the God Amadra or to the Holy Planet, to the God Mean, the God of Talit. Come closer, please. From the top, you can, you are going to see this is the column.
corner of this is the corner of city the first. Later we are going to see to visit the other section for Rams the second. City the first in a very leaning position offering different kind of offer to the different Gadana Gamps. Holes at the beginning, the Falcon, Amin Ra, the God Mean, the God of Kutani, Amin Ra once again, Amin Ra in the human shape. And all of them in a very kneeling position, which gives you the indication how City the First, as a pharaoh, was very loyal to the ancient Egyptian Galana Gamses. Guys, who's going to, to see all of this? The normal Egyptian citizens. They are going to see how kneeling City the First, as a pharaoh, in front of the different Galana Gamses. Don't you ever forget that he is the link between the different Galana Gamses. And the committee. Follow me, please. I think you tell that it's Amara. Pardon? <coughs> you know that's the guy Amara. This is Amara. Yes. Yeah. How, how do you tell? Mm. Names wise and cartouche wise. Okay. You know what I mean? Very wise. Okay. All right. This way, please. I think that I got 67 gigs. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> Rounding the, uh, the size we need. And then they, st they start to put a wooden stick in each hole. Wooden stick in each hole. And then they start to put water for three days. Three days water. Granite, holes, wooden stick, and water. What will be happening? That's right. To expand the granite. So for cutting this piece of granite, which is not yet obelisk, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It had been cutting. Now we are talking about 220 kilometers from Aswan to Luxor. And the only way to go to ship it is by the Nile River. The current, it's from Aswan to Cairo. So. What they did, imagine that this is the piece of the stone that they had been cut. They start to put trees from every side. Okay? We are not talking about 100 or 200 or 300 trees. No, actually, that if the obelisk is going to be this size, they are going to surround it by trees by that side. Just to be floating on the Nile River. The minute that this piece of obelisk or this piece of stone is going to be on the Nile River, surrounding by all of these trees, rows and trees. Three boats are waiting. They cannot be able to grab it, actually, because it's very heavy. But with the Nile River current, actually, start sailing, navigating to the north. Upon the Karnak Temple, okay, it reached, it, it, this obelisk, actually, this stone had been reached over here. Actually, the ground is supposed to be sand everywhere. They start to put trees on it. And then they start to slide it on these trees until to be here. And then the workers. They start to polish it and script the names of Hatshepsut. This is, this is obvious, belongs to the Queen Hatshepsut. Her names have been inscripted over there. And then the obelisk is ready. But actually, it's on the ground. How they are going to raise it. Imagine that this is the obelisk. They start to get the sand from under the base of the obelisk. Add it under the top of the obelisk, from here to there, from here to there. They got the sand from here, and they put it under the top of the obelisk, until it became like that. Nine meters under the ground. And then by rows, they start to grab it. The minute it's going, it's going to be stand, they start to surrounding the nine meters under the ground by a very big stones, just to stand it, as you can be able to see it right now. That's actually the main fact for building an obelisk, transfer it, and stand it like this. And we are going to see one of these obelisks actually face to face, that you can be able to see which kind of granite we are talking about. Follow me, please.
By the way, guys, parents, they were hating each other. Some of the parents, actually, they are hating each other. And some of them, actually, that they have the... They would like to erase as much as they can from the deeds of the parents. And this is what happened, actually, for that parent. His name is Tausar II. What he made, actually, that he made his own temple upon another pharaoh's temple. This is a top of one column. This is the top of one column. And there are around 22 columns plus statues under the ground. You know what I mean? What they did actually is that they covered it and they start to do his own thing. And of course that we cannot be able to erase all of this to get the things inside. But it's 22 columns, similar. This column is still under the ground. You know what I mean? So actually, Pharaoh, they went not in the very good uh, relationship with other people. Um, something very good, it should be in a script. If he did something wrong, nobody knows nothing about it. One of the most important things for Ramses II, it was the War of Kaddish. The War of Kaddish, Kaddish, it's a place from the, um, you know, Syria? Syria. It's exactly on the part of Syria. These people actually, they came to invade Egypt on the reign of Ramses II. And it was a war, we call it the War of Kaddish. Ramses II, he got his own victory. And then it should be inscripted over there. You can be able to see Ramses II holding his weapon by hand, another hand, his enemy, who are raising their hand, asking for mercy, and they are offering them to the god Amen. If we are going to move over here, that I need you to have a very full concentration about here. Ramses II, and behind him, the president of this war, they had been tied from behind, over there. He is grabbing them and offered them to the god Amen Ra in a very seated position, okay? And if you're going to look to the face, the faces of his enemy, the prisoner wise, then you can be able to find out exactly which kind of people we are talking about, facing wise. Over there, actually, you can be able to see another prisoner. They had been tied from the neck and from the hand, Ramses II in his horse carriage, leading them to be offered to Amun Ra. Sacrificing wise, it wasn't exist. Sacrificing, it wasn't exist at the time of the ancient Egyptian religion, forbidden sacrificing people, by the way. Not like the Hollywood movies. No, 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 this is a very wrong idea. And which gave you the indication that horses, it was exist at the time. So we are talking about over then 4,000 years in horses, it was exist. Because some culture mentioned that they had been discovered the horses. No. Horse-wise, it was exist on the on the reign of Ramses II. Over here, it had been representing how Ramses II, upon his horse carriage, by the arrow, shooting as much as he can from the enemy who had been laid down, had been killed. This is giving you the indication about the war of Kaddish at that time and how Ramses II, he got his own victory 
to be representing on the Karnak temples. And by the way, that this war had been inscripted here in Abu Sembel temple also and in Luxor temple also. It had been inscripted. He would like to show the people how great Ramses II at that time. This way, please. Actually, it came from Aswan, around 100, 220 kilometers, in one piece. And I will explain to you how they cut it, and how they shape it over here, and how they stand it by like this way. Closer to that in all the ancient Egyptian history we have 36 obelisks. The ancient Egyptian workers, they made 36 obelisks. Seven of them, they still remaining in a very good shape in Egypt. Some of them, they had been broken down. And some of them actually, they had distributed all over the world. But we have three questions we should be asked, which should be answered. How they cut it, how they shape it, and how they stand it. There are an area in Aswan, we call it the unfinished obelisk area. From there, in Aswan, they bring or they cut all the obelisk for the ancient Egyptian. Imagine that we need to do an obelisk, just having the idea. They're just making the size of the obelisk, that I need the obelisk by this size. And they start to, to, to make a hole in each fifth. Ah, uh, here, it's over here. the ancient Egyptian person paying his own tax according to the water level. If the water level is going to be very low, they are not going to pay anything because actually agriculture is going to be impossible. There is no water. If the water level is going to be very high, stairs wise, meaning that everything has been covered by the water, people will not be able to pay. But if the water level is going to be in the middle, meaning that this is a very good season, they can be able to pay their own tax. Whose nation is amongst the priests inside? So actually, it's two things millimeter and purification. That's for the sacred one. Guys, you are very lucky. We are going to be alone with the sacred, with the lucky scarab. The last side from heaven, the scarab. We saw the ram head, we saw the sacred boat, we saw the human shape, and finally, the scarab, the lucky scarab. I need you to wish a very good wish. You know what I mean? And attack it for seven times, you know what I mean? Okay. Very good question. 
This direction, please. This way. <laughs> one more, one more. This side actually is going to be for Ramses the second court, or may I say, Ramses the second section. You can be able to see him in a very kneeling position, like his father, Ramses the second, in a very kneeling position among the three of life. Who is this then? Ramses the second. I thought you said his father was Ramses the second. No, his father, City the first. Oh, City the first. City the first. Okay. The other side. Okay. Ramses, Ramses the second on this side, in a very kneeling position actually among the three of life. But what's the inscription mentioned? This is the god Tahut, the Edith. And he was the goddess who was responsible for documenting everything, writing everything. He's just taking one lead from the Tree of Life, write the name of Ramses II, and Ramses II offer it to the god Amun Ra over here. And then you can be able to see the equality and the immortality between the god Horus and Ramses II, hand to hand, giving you the description of the equality. The key of life, excuse me, in his own mouth, that Horus, the get Horus right now, is giving the key of life to the Ramses II. The immortality. From now on, Ramses II is going to be treated like one of the different Gadanagad. As I mentioned for you, guys, the main target, the main concept, not to rule, not to get everything, not to be one of the different Gadanagad. The people can, they can be able to be kneel, you know what I mean? To, to, to treat them like the different Gadanagad. Follow me, please, this way. Oh, shit. Another offer from Ladies and gentlemen, you can be able to see Ramsin II offering the incense to the loot, to the sacred boat of Amun Ra. But the things which is very amazing, how many monks and priests, they are carrying the sacred boat of Amun Ra. 31. 30, 15 monks, they have the mosque of the god Horus. And another 15 monks, they have the mosque of the god Anubis, the shakti, the god of purification. Ramsin II in the middle. Helping them for carrying on the sacred boat of Amun Ra, which give you the, 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 the main indication that this sacred boat actually was very heavy. It was actually made from the gold, the pure gold, which give you the indication that Egypt at the time, financially wise, actually it was very good. You get it? Why? Ramses II, his father, Siddhi the First, they made all of this. 
134 columns. For what reason? Which kind of message? They would like to pass it to the normal ancient Egyptian system. The key. You know what I mean? Why they made all of this? That's what I'm going to see it right now. <laughs> okay, guys, I need your foot on the trick, focusing and to imagine exactly what was the situation. You remember, I told you that. From the sunrise to the sunset, this is the lifetime. From the sunset till the next sunrise, that will be the 12 hours. But the Pharaoh is going to be joined, a different Gadana goddess and a different sacred boat to be on the next life. Okay? Remember that we are in the East Bank, the land of life. Tomorrow, we will visit the land of death. This is the sailing boat, sailing boat, not sacred boat. The sailing boat of whom? Two ram heads meaning Amun Ra. So this is the sailing boat of Amun Ra. This is the Nile River. Upon the sailing boat of Amun Ra, the sacred boat of Amun Ra. And here, Ramses II, upon this sailing boat, offering the incense to the sacred boat of Amun Ra. Navigating on the Nile. A row, like this one exactly. Over here. And another sun boat. Upon this sun boat, who? The goddess. Horus, Amen Ra, Horus again, Ramses II, and the goddess. All of them actually, they are grabbing the sailing boat of Amen. Four of them, they are looking to the east side. Except the one who is leading the journey, Anubis, the god of multiplication. He is looking to the west side. This inscription had been inscripted to, to show the normal ancient Egyptian sepulchre yeah. that Ramses II, he got the guarantee in his own life, in his own lifetime, that he's going to be joined, he's going to be to the next life upon the sailing boat of Amun Ra with Amun Ra. And he is the only pharaoh who had been in a question himself for telling his story in his lifetime. You know what I mean? On a very huge temple, the most important temple, which is Karnak Temple, the house of Amun Ra. And I'm the one who's going to be on the next life with Amun Ra. Ramsay the third and Ramsay the second. Ramsay the second in a very willing position in a very blessing position. And in front of him, the monks and the priests. And they are blessing the god Amun. So Ramses II, his relationship with the monks and the priests, it was a very good relationship. And he insisted to put the monks and the priests in front of him. Ramses III, he put the different god and the gods actually behind him. You know what I mean? You can be able to differentiate between the characters concerning about pharaohs throughout the inscription, by the way. This way, please. The last inscription from Ramses II when he was young, 13 years old, just a kid, very small kid, 13 years old, holding a bunch of offers, offer it to the god Amun. So actually that since he was young, he was very linked to the ancient Egyptian religion, offering a different kind of offer to the different god and goddesses, especially the god Amun. Guys, that was the uh, Karnak temples. I hope that you enjoy it. And uh, follow me, please, this way to show you the way it's exit. Okay. This is just a quick temple of Luxor.